Welcome to Invictus Motors. For two reasons, I would like you to be watching this video. And one is, should you actually buy a Lotus Elise? And perhaps why? And secondly, why should you maybe consider this Lotus Elise? Let's get into the review. Well, the Lotus Elise is, I guess, in some ways, a mini Lamborghini. Uh, I mean, just look at these lines. You really need to get to this level on the Lotus Elise to really admire and appreciate the elegance and essentially the engineering that goes behind something like this. It's an absolutely phenomenal low center of gravity. The aerodynamics are beautiful. And essentially all the lines, all the curves, everything that you see on this, is exquisite, it's done to perfection. I mean, just the, the way these lines sweep through the front of the body, the grills here, the, the central grills, what you see here, I mean, all of this is absolutely exquisite. They run on these phenomenal, beautiful uh, alloys, uh, especially this one. Uh, these are these like multi-spoke alloys. I think they look absolutely great. They fill up the arches phenomenally well. And you've got the air intakes on the side here, and you've got this Targa feel to the central part of the Lotus Elise uh, with these bucket seat like setup. As beautiful as the front look, the rear is absolutely out of this world. I mean, from a design point of view, just look at this rear spoiler lip sort of a setup that you can see uh, that is incorporated essentially within the bodywork of the car. I mean, where it starts and how it goes up. I think it's phenomenal. Engineering, whoever has drawn it, I think it's absolutely timeless. It's classics. These cars are essentially classics. I mean, they've gone up in value in some instances from about, you know, five to 10,000 pounds increase in value over the past three years. Yes, one of the main contributing factors is the shortage of supplies, but Lotus really never made a lot of cars, or, you know, over a course of a year. So, you know, if you wanted a brand new Lotus, it was about 40,000 pounds. Nowadays, a brand, a brand new Lotus isn't really easily accessible as such the Lotus Elise because they discontinued them um, not long ago either. But essentially, you got a lot of car for your money. Nowadays, these are essentially classics. They've gone absolutely through the roof in value. This is a 2010 play which has obviously got the much later engine. They're pretty much bulletproof. They sound great, they drive great. And they've ironed out the problem of the Series 1 Lotus Elise, uh, the, the, the issues that the Series 1's essentially had. In terms of aspect, both on the interior and the exterior, this is finished in this gorgeous British racing green color, which I think the second Lotus Elise we've had, the first one was, you know, another Lotus Elise touring. This is now, the Lotus Elise in the triple one uh, finished in race, uh, the British race in green with this beige interior. I mean, it's not beige everywhere because if you sort of get into the inside, it's okay, beige here, you've got a bit of black, black hair, the black dash, and uh, you've got a bit of Alcantara. Let's, let's just get into it because it is an absolute experience getting in and out of one of these. That, that, that is a beautiful journey in itself. You get this Momo steering wheel, which is very small, but again, ergonomically extremely well built, very purposeful, very well put together. You've got this sort of, uh, I wouldn't say like a rough, but a furnished uh, aluminium um, gear uh, selector and handbrake. Uh, you've got these tactile buttons, buttons there, buttons here. Uh, and essentially, it's a very analog, classic car. And from, you know, just the feel of closing the doors and essentially opening the doors, it, it has a beautiful feel to it. They're simple, engineered, extremely, extremely well because there isn't much to engineer in these. Uh, and all in all, I guess, you know, we really need to start this car, drive it, and tell you 
why I absolutely love the driving side of these. These cars, they're an absolutely an experience and a joy to ride. So I'm very looking forward to it. This gear select lever is very engaging, very nice to hold on to. And the exhaust, crew, you know, produces a beautiful, beautiful sound. Absolutely gorgeous. Whoa. This is this is what I live for. This is this is what I absolutely love as part of my job and the Lotus gives me that satisfaction without a doubt. And uh, it's truly a joy to be able to present and obviously cars that are so unique and so full of character like the Lotus uh, is, is essentially what we live for. Well, what have we got here on our hand? In terms of the engine displacement, this is the 1.6 litre engine. BHP wise, what does it produce? It produces 135 brake horsepower and it's circa 160 Newton meters of torque. What do you get in terms of the 0 to 62 miles per hour? Let's find out. Answer is 6.5 seconds. That's for the 0 to 62 miles per hour in this. But this car isn't. This car isn't about how fast it can go. It's it's the character and the way it looks aesthetically, the way it drives, and overall how it handles. And bends and curves like this. The Lotus. We'll walk all over it, really. Beautiful. Just good acceleration, good sound, engaging. For the money, what an experience. And they're also quite easy to drive. And once essentially you're into the car, not hard to drive at all. Yes, very old school steering. Almost feels as if it's no power steering. I don't know, maybe there is no power steering. But it's a light car. It weighs 1,140 kilograms. That essentially, I mean, per BHP, it's six kilograms worth of weight. Now, this is a mid engine car, rear wheel drive, lightweight. It's a recipe for a fantastic sports car. Ah. And it stops well, meaning the brakes is got to be important to work well. Two to three thousand RPM, beautiful, exquisite sound. It feels good, sounds good, and all in all, absolutely a joy to experience, to drive. I mean, this is the, the, the epitome of a car that is engaging, the epitome of a car that is driver focused. But at the same time, you know, it, this is done roughly 66,000 miles. So, and that was done in between two owners from Neo. And something that is absolutely mesmerizing on this, on this essentially is the miles per gallon. That is 45 miles per gallon combined. And on a motorway, you're looking at about 56 miles per gallon. 
anything closer to this from an experience point of view, like the, the rawness, the analogness, and just the fact, you know, it's a good sports car with, you, 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 you know, a, a good power to weight ratio, good takeoff, character, you know, heritage, anything closer to this, you're really looking at the Alpine A110. And they start from about 43 to 45,000 pounds. And has the Alpine A110 have depreciation in them? Who knows? I'm sure they do, like many cars that will age. Whereas the Lotus Elise have been discontinued. They don't make them like this anymore. And as a British, these are truly something to be proud of. You know, there isn't much engineering or much from manufacturing point of view that happens in this country anymore. So the Lotus Elise is, I guess, a modern day success story. Essentially, does it put a smile on my face? Yes, it does. Does it make me get out of bed? Yes, it does. Is this a car that I will most look forward to driving where I've worked five days and I've got my weekend coming up? Yes, without a doubt. And a great sound from the exhaust. Is this exhaust standard? Who knows? Well, to be completely frank with you, I don't think it is. Having had a 2006 plate Lotus Elise Touring the exhaust as standards are not as throaty and as crunchier as this. And the other fantastic, phenomenal thing about this is when you want a convertible, it's annoying being in a convertible. All the wind you get and you kind of have an intimate conversation. Essentially, you can't present in a convertible car. It's very difficult. We have to do a lot of, you know, noise in terms of the sound, the editing. Whereas in something like this, it's so windproof and it's a nice intimate cabin space. The seats, they feel very comfortable. They feel brilliant. The steering feels good, feels light. And knowing that it's got pretty much four new tires helps a great deal. And they're, they're, they're not some rubbish brand tires either. It's got the Yokohama sports tires. Would I suggest you to buy one of these? Absolutely, without a doubt. I mean, if it's the last, you know, 23, 24, 25,000 pounds you had, would I suggest you spend it on a Lotus Elise or on a Porsche 911? If I was in your shoes, I'd buy a Lotus Elise, without a doubt. If the test drive hasn't convinced you, hopefully the paperwork will. From an owner's point of view, this has got two owners from new, Mr. Barker, who was the um, current owner up until recently. He was essentially the second owner from August 2013. The first owner, uh, Mr. Grandison, had it from, from essentially new from 2010. It's got the original owner's manual, the original maintenance record book. I mean, this is very cute. On the Lotus Leash, you get this really tiny, um, <laughs> service book it's the smallest i've seen in my life you know you've got these beautiful stamps there from obviously originally supplied by the murray motor company they were a lotus franchise and until 2014 they've got it all stamped up and serviced and then from 2014 it's got all the service invoices uh, i mean including some big items the spark plugs rear brake pads done that would so all the service invoices uh, essentially from 2014 the 15 is here the 16 the 17 the 18 and essentially what it's missing in terms of uh, service invoices is the 2019 2020 and 2021 and that's purely down to the fact that it hardly had any use between uh, these three years, essentially. I did speak to the garage, Debenham Garage Limited, they're based in Store Market, Suffolk. Uh, they essentially last had it in on the 25th of July, 2022, whereby they carried out an MOT, they've done an oil change, and essentially um, it's also had four brand new tires. So if it's, if it's a car that you're gonna be looking forward to driving, putting on miles, and 
a car that you're going to be taking around uh, curves at a bit of a speed and with some enthusiasm, then you know you've got a set of you know new new wheels here, new tires. Uh, the wheels, as a matter of fact, also seem to have been refurb uh, refurb lately as well. Now, in terms of keys, it's got two original keys, both the Lotus's keys. Uh, they both work. Bodywork wise, it's this is now close to you know just just over 12 years old essentially. It's gonna have its age-related marks, uh, scratches, etc. And just to highlight like little areas, as you can see, you've got a tiny little area here. Essentially, my cameraman can get some B-roll. You've got some surface uh, scratches here at the top. And if we walk around essentially the rest of the vehicle, here on the wing, it's some tiny, tiny little marks and scratches uh, or, or, as you would expect it side door mirrors which as you can see protrude out a fair bit for a small car like this so it's easy to get that knocked um, and essentially you come to the front a bit of tiny little flaking on that headlight uh, essentially on the front as well uh, a bit of tiny little flaking on, in the paintwork there but you know this 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 is this is a car that has had a lot of love, a lot of money spent on the number plate is is in an, in an absolutely beautiful place. But it's, you know, it's a car that's had a lot of love and money spent on. It needs a home that's gonna take good care of it, you know, look after it and treat it well. These are essentially cosmetic things. I mean, all the mechanical big items, uh, works have been done, sort of big services, the car, is driving extremely extremely well handles really well sounds absolutely amazing this is an absolutely impeccable car the price we have put it up for truly reflects that also but essentially uh, you know it could do with some cosmetic uh, touches as you could see a little bit of a scratch or uh, some damage here on the front bumper a little bit here as well but you know this is this is now a 12 year old car you you you, you got to give it a bit of love and i'm sure uh, if you'd like us to give you a price and a trade to address some of these works, you, you're not looking at no more than about £500. We can get it done and addressed for you. Alternatively, you know, you would like to get this done elsewhere, you're more than welcome to do so as well. So I hope I've convinced you in some way, form or shape. Number one, should you buy a Lotus Elise? Yeah, absolutely amazing. To get a similar sort of an experience in a Porsche 911, you're looking at the Porsche 911 Targos. And they start at about 30,000 pounds for the 997.1s. But that's, at, at the very minimum, it's a 3.6 liter engine in them. They're bigger engine cars. So essentially the maintenance cost will obviously go through the roof in, in comparison to the Lotus Elise. Whereas these have these tiny, small, little petite engine here at the back, which I will illustrate, beautiful to look at. Um, the Lotus Performance engine, obviously not built by Lotus, but essentially um, very, very low maintenance. And if you're in the market for a Lotus Elise, one would be looking extremely um, one would find it extremely difficult to find one in a color like this, in a spec like that. And essentially, I think this has got an absolutely phenomenal owner's history, very low owners, and a very good service history. Just the 19, 20, and 21 invoices in here I've inquired from the previous garage, but unfortunately, they've said that because it's done very little miles, Mr. Barker simply hadn't brought it in to get it serviced during the 19, 20, and 21. But, you know, I hope I've showed you around, I've been honest. The video should do the job and answer all of your questions. If you're wondering where the roof, it's actually quite easy. I'm more than happy to illustrate that. Essentially, you get these two bars that support the roof. That one of them goes in there, the other one simply there. And same thing on this side. This is the rest of the roof. It's quite easy for this roof to actually, as a matter of fact, go onto the car uh, where is the where you see the writing. This is essentially this side of the roof that will go first. You've got these very easy two latches here that just slide in and very gently they go into the sides there. Once you've got that side in, the other side is easily stretched and the other side goes in. 
The roof is, as a matter of fact, in pretty good condition. There isn't any rips whatsoever. And overall, you know, when you've got something like this, you want to be driving it with the roof off. And one thing that I'll give Lotus credit for is, is, is essentially how well this roof, as a matter of fact, is designed and put together. And with the amount of ease, you're able to essentially um, put it on, take it off, and put it essentially either in the passenger seat if you would like, or perhaps leave it in your garage. And uh, if you've got anything else you want to know, just give us a ring and we'd be more than happy to answer it. Should you buy a Lotus Elise? Absolutely yes. Bye-bye.